Hi everybody, um, this will be a short video showing how to start with FreeCAD and how to start um, <coughs> modeling Bing with, with, with FreeCAD and how to set up your FreeCAD when it's the first time that you're using it. Uh, thanks a lot for everybody who left comments on the on last month's video. Um, this gives really a lot of ideas to develop stuff further in in next videos. I'm going to try to address it little bit by by little bit. Um, one very important thing I forgot to tell last month, but uh, which is really you you need to know. Um, there is already a full course about uh, doing Bing with FreeCAD, which is done by uh, my friend Regis, um, and that you must really check out uh, if you're interested in this, because it's really crazily complete. Uh, basically, he covered uh, not only about FreeCAD, also about other uh, open source tools uh, that used to, to do architecture and the modeling. Um, like Blender, uh, but there is really a lot of material about FreeCAD and how to model every single kind of stuff you would want to to model in FreeCAD. This is really a very complete course and uh, definitely check it out if, you, if you're interested in learning how to do Bing with, with FreeCAD uh, because I guess you have everything there. So, um, this is FreeCAD when you just install install it. Uh, I know it's not pretty. Uh, this FreeCAD Start Center is an ID we had to make it like to make a uh, welcome screen. Uh, it's not really, really good. We will change that in next version, uh, certainly. So you can really close that out. And uh, this is FreeCAD closed. Uh, I will explain it briefly. Um, how how it works uh, basically the main control is this one which is the workbench selector um, here are all different workbenches um, that you can activate it and if you activate one of another workbench that's not start you will see that you have a lot more tools than um, than than what it looked like all these toolbars are movable, so you can just reorganize your screen as you want. And if you go to another workbench and then you go back to the one you want, uh, the toolbars that you organized will stay the way you you put them. So basically what you need to know uh, to start working with architecture is that uh, basically you have to you will have to explore all these workbench. I will cover them in later videos. But basically, the main one at the moment is Arc. It's the workbench that uh, we use to do architecture. It has, uh, it contains all the tools of Draft. Draft is a workbench that contains 2D tools to basically do the same thing as you would do in AutoCAD. Draw lines, rectangles, circles, and uh, that kind of 2D objects. Uh, the Arc workbench contains all these tools and also the specific BIM tools. Uh, okay, this is better. Uh, so basically you would open a new file and then you're ready to work. There are a couple of things you need to know here. Uh, one is the mouse model, which is this below. And you have several choices actually, and these all configure what, how your mouse works. Uh, which button is for selecting, which button is for rotating the view, panning the view. And you must take one that suits you better. My favorite one is the gesture one, uh, which basically the left button is to select, the right button is to pawn, and uh, rotate is also with the left button when there is nothing selected. It's basically when you click outside of an object, it works really well, I think. So the next thing you need to do is set up a couple of preferences. And the pre preference are really complex. Uh, as the application is growing, uh, so do the preferences. Uh, so finding your way in the FreeCAD preference is already a complex task. Um, in the Beam workbench that I'm working on, I'm working on something on a reduced version that would be really 
a simple screen, a simple screen to, to set the, uh, the, the most useful options that I will show you now. Uh, but uh, at the moment, um, it's useful to know where to look at. Basically, the, there is not much to, to you need to do. Um, you must be aware that uh, the preference of a certain workbench load when you will load that workbench. So to see the arc preference, you need to have loaded the arc workbench, etc. Uh, so what you need to do, basically, in this general tab, you can change the start workbench. That's the workbench that will FreeCAD will start with. Instead of start, you can, for example, put arc, and you will already start inside the arc workbench, which is already something. Uh, the document here, um, you can create a new document at startup. That's a good thing. So it starts already with the document open. You have a couple of storage options here. Uh, that's basically there is an auto recovery that if if the program crashes uh, it will save automatically uh, every 15 minutes in this case you can change that save the mail into the document that's good um, and here you can put your name and you can change if you want the default license of the files. If you leave all right reserved, that means basically um, no license. Uh, but you can already use a Creative Commons li license, so all your files would be like shareable. Uh, that's how you want it. Um, and another very important option is the units. Um, these units only affect the way uh, the units look like in your interface, in your FreeCAD interface. FreeCAD saves everything uh, in real units. Basically, internally, uh, everything is saved in millimeters. So basically, this is only the way you see it. Your building will be in, or your model will be in real world units every, uh, every time. Like, if you're if you have a wall that's one meter uh, uh, long, it will always be one, me uh, one meter. If you show your units in millimeters, uh, it would be 1,000 millimeters. If you work in inch, uh, it would be uh, how many inch in a meter? 30-something. Uh, um, and, and, but the, the wall will always stay the same. So you can change your units or you can... Uh, give your file to someone who is working in other units and the, the objects inside the file will stay the same even if that person is looking at your model in another unit, in working in it in another unit. Um, so this basically is the way you see your, your model and the way you like to work with. Uh, you can change that anytime. Uh, I like to work in centimeters so I use this. Um, and that's basically it. So that's all you really need to, to get started. There is more that you can uh, set later on, uh, like uh, the fonts you li like to use. You can, um, you can explore this um, <clears throat> later on as you want, but, but that's basically everything you, you need. And another important concept is this button here, which is the working plane. Uh, everything you do in Draft and Arc, uh, not not in other workbenches, um, goes on a current working plane. Uh, so you always have a working plane defined uh, somewhere. Uh, you can set it at the top, and when you start drawing, you have these grids appearing. Um, <coughs> you basically Put in the top or front or side or auto, which means it will adapt every time you change the view and start a new command. For example, I start drawing a line and you see that the grid uh, adapted my current view. So if I put myself in top view, and I start drawing a line, you see that the grid adapts to my top view. That is usually useful. I like that mode 
because you just put yourself in front of you and then you will draw in front of you. You put yourself inside view, then you will draw inside view. That's pretty useful, but you can also lock the working plane some position, for example, the top. That allows you to rotate the view and still work on the ground plane. So basically this grid accompanies, this grid reflects uh, where your working plane is. Uh, you can change the way the grid looks like. Um, it, this is the spacing between the small uh, squares of the grid. And this is uh, how many small squares between each big square of the grid. Um, so that's basically all you need to get started. Now you can try. You can start drawing with any of the 2D tools here. Uh, you have all the common ones, uh, lines, uh, polylines, rectangles, and, and so. And you have a couple of beam tools to, to make walls, structure, uh, etc. That I will cover in in next videos. Uh, these cyan buttons are the snapping tools that's uh, important uh, now they are almost all uh, turned on um, you must know that uh, the more the more uh, snapping tools uh, are turned on the slower drawing goes so i would uh, advise you to turn off all the one all the ones you don't need and keep only the ones that you intend to to use uh, so you will draw faster. One important one is this last one, which is the working plane snap. If it is activated, uh, anything you will draw uh, will stay in the, in the working plane. Um, if not, you will be able to snap outside of the working plane. Uh, for example, if you have, if I had here a big object, uh, and I would snap on the corner that's above the working plane, if this is activated, I won't snap on the above above point, but projected on the point, projected on the on the working plane. Uh, if I turn it off, uh, my snapping point will be the real point uh, above the working plane. So that's something uh, important to know if you want it to turn it on or off. Usually, you will want to turn it on on or off depending on what you want to snap. Um, well, that's it. Um, tell me if there is something missing there that you will, would want me to address in the next video. And then in next videos, I will start showing all these beam tools, how they work and uh, what you can do with each of them. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked and see you next month. Bye.